Welcome to the live stream. We'll be starting in just a few minutes. Okay, we're ready to begin. I'm Terry Stauffer, Global Head of Marketing and Communications at JA Worldwide, and I'll be helping queue up some of your questions here on Facebook. But this entire session will be managed by two JA students. Please give a warm welcome to our interviewers, Nishitha and Nikitha Kasnavis. Hi, everyone. Oh. Welcome, everyone, to the third STEM 2D Live at Home event, brought to you by J&J &J and the STEM 2D partners, JA Worldwide, FHI 360, Smithsonian Science Education Center, and Girl Scouts of the U.S. We are streaming on the JA Worldwide Facebook page, and we are really excited to be interviewing Somi Kim, Senior Director of Healthcare Solutions at J&J Design. Hi, Somi. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm great. You guys are up late tonight. Yes, Yeah. <laughs> So I would like to know a little bit more about you. So rather than jumping into specifics about your work, can we ask you a really important question? Are you a dog person or a cat person? Definitely a dog person. I have a schnoodle named Luna. That is so cute. You? I totally agree. I really love dogs too. So another important question we have is, what was the last show or movie you binge watched? Actually, I binge listened to a podcast called This Podcast Will Kill You while I was walking my dog. The hosts, both named Aaron, are infectious disease specialists who report on the natural history of diseases and developments in medicine. It is fascinating. How about you? Oh, for us, the last show we watched was MasterChef as we're trying to improve on our cooking skills. And the last movie we watched and we found it really interesting was a South Korean film called Parasite. And that left us at the edge of our seats. Yes, it was so intense. Okay, so now moving on to the last question before we get into career talk. What has been the best thing about quarantine life? The best thing about quarantine for me is that I don't have to commute three hours per day and I get to spend more time with my husband, my son, and my dog. And what's interesting is that usually I don't spend much time in the kitchen, but because we're all at home all the time, I'm taking a few cues from MasterChef and experimenting because the kitchen is a laboratory. So I've tried to make bread. I'm actually doing some fermentation lacto-fermentation of jalapeno pepper pickles. How about you? Are there any highlights of life in quarantine for you? Oh, for me, before uh, pre-COVID, my life used to be like a robot. I'll come back home from school, do homework, and then go to bed. But during this COVID situation, I got to spend more time with my family, and we actually had a movie marathon. Like every weekend, we'll be on a movie marathon, which actually helped us to forge greater bond. Yeah, I really liked how we can take things slowly now and like take a break from our fast-paced lives. So that is really, really relaxing. So three years ago, we participated in the STEM 2D activities through JA Singapore. One of the most memorable events or activities that I took part in that I still remember today was when we had to participate in a simulation of a knee implantation surgery. And I was so mesmerized by it because that was when I first realized that different concepts of STEM, such as science and technology, engineering, even design manufacturing were all integrated and could be applied concurrently. So that really fueled my passion, you could say. And I'm really like inspired to pursue a career in STEM 2D now. 
Oh, after that experience, I was really interested in the medical field. And for me, what captivated me the most was the experience where we got to go to the warehouse. And there we got um, to learn more about the manufacturing process and the supply chain. So usually when you go to a shop, all we see is a product. But what I realized is that there's a lot of science, technology, engineering, math, manufacturing, and design applied to that product. So, so, yeah, so because of that experience, we're so excited to be interviewing Somi, who had helped develop the STEM 2D initiative and co leads it. Let's start off with something basic. What does STEM 2D actually mean? STEM 2D is STEM plus manufacturing and design. The number two in STEM 2D stands for the two in mathematics and the two, I'm sorry, the M in mathematics and the M in manufacturing. And as a science-led company, Johnson & Johnson has always had a lot of STEM roles, but we're also in the business of making products, which means we need to apply the science and ensure that we understand unmet needs. Our products need to leave the laboratory and make a difference in the world. So of those six letters, the last one stands for design. And Somi Kim is a design expert. Here is her brief bio. Somi Kim is Senior Director, Healthcare Solutions at Johnson & Johnson J&J &J Design, where she champions human-centered design solutions with real-world impact. She's responsible for building the design practice in support of J&J's healthcare initiatives across pharmaceuticals, global public health, and medical devices. Her passion for cultural context, brand experience, and human behavior fuels her desire to integrate design into larger conversations about business and society. To further these goals, she's proud to be a member of the J&J Design Leadership Team and to co-lead J&J's Women in STEM 2D Youth Programs. Somi received an MFA in Visual Communication from California Institute of the Arts and an MB in Visual and Environmental Studies from Harvard College. She's an Aspen Institute First Mowers Fellow and lives in Montclair, New Jersey, USA with her husband, son, and dog. So, Somi, we would all like to know, what was a typical work day like for you pre-COVID? If you ask my teenage son, he would say that my work day is filled with blah, 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 blah. And that's because I spend a lot of time in meetings because healthcare design involves lots of different people working together to change the world. There are diseases to prevent, treat, or cure. And a typical work day is one which I spend a lot of time listening, learning, presenting, responding to questions, and writing emails. I help facilitate conversations, connect the dots, and support decision making. It's it's like a cross between being a shepherd dog and a gardener. That sounds like a really hectic life work schedule. So I've been asked, wanting to ask this question for a long time. Can you help us better understand what you mean by design? Many people think that design is about style or aesthetics. They may think of fashion or furniture or cars or high-tech gadgets, but there's much more to design than good looks. Design is a problem-solving practice that draws on the expertise of many different people and disciplines. It's very important to include different perspectives because to improve life for all people, you have to practice inclusive design and account for diversity of experiences and abilities and ways of doing things. You have to put aside your personal assumptions and preferences and biases. For example, how might we help parents take care of a sick child? How might we keep our hands clean when there's no running water? How might we help bridge the gap if there aren't enough doctors in a country? Or if the instructions for a medical treatment are too complicated to follow easily? People who work in the field of design include graphic designers, industrial designers, architects, researchers, behavioral scientists, business specialists, and writers. Designers ask a lot of questions. We do real life research, we make models, and we test new ideas. 
we, we really work hard to simplify and make sense of complex information. And we help to imagine what the future looks like. Why don't we do a quick activity to highlight a key design principle? Sure, they are fun. fun. So yeah. I want you to just sketch something that comes to mind when I ask you the following question. Draw a house. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to do this. Okay, pens down. Show me what you have. Very nice. So this is a yes and situation. When it comes to design, we want to put our assumptions aside and make sure that we're considering all of the different factors. So I never said who the house was for. This is a house. Here's another house, wow. a tree. And in the tree, there might be a nest. When we think about human beings, there are also many different types of houses. So you can see that just the simple definition or expectation around something that is common can take us to lots of different places if we include broader perspectives. That was really eye-opening. I didn't expect to see so many perspectives, but that really helped explain what you do. So could you give us some examples of how design is being implemented at J&J right now? Sure, I'd be happy to. Some active design projects at Johnson & Johnson include designing more environmentally sustainable packaging and injection devices that are easier to use. We are also designing better support services for cancer patients and we're helping nurses and surgeons with training, digital tools, and robots. We're also designing a process for returning to the workplace after the pandemic. Healthcare includes not just taking care of people who are sick, but also the products and services that support good health that help us stay healthy. And well being is not just about physical well being but also emotional health. So when we investigate what it means to live with a certain disease or condition, we ask what people are thinking, feeling, and doing. We use storytelling and role play to question our assumptions. We have to learn empathy, which means to walk in someone else's shoes and not just assume that we know best. And we ask questions such as, what is the future of the workplace? of the hospital, of the classroom, especially now during the pandemic? What is the future of the doctor-patient interaction? What isn't working? What could be better? And to do this kind of problem solving around healthcare experiences, we need to have diverse teams with different expertise and experiences to develop the most innovative solutions. And diverse points of view are critical to solving complex challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic reminds us of the need for diverse representation in STEM 2D fields to address public health crises. For example, a lot of personal protective equipment or PPE was not developed with smaller frame people in mind, including large numbers of women who are frontline healthcare workers. Speaking of women, we keep hearing that very few women go into STEM careers and those who do tend to not stay very long. It also sounds like healthcare is one of the fields where girls and women feel like they can make a difference in the world. More than 80% of a family's healthcare decisions are made by women, yet females are underrepresented in health sciences and technical fields. At Johnson & Johnson, we want to help increase the participation of women, women who will invent technologies and products and services that enable people to live healthier lives. Integrating design together with the sciences can inspire new ways to solve persistent challenges like 
helping disabled people walk or talk, improving access to education, and reducing plastic waste. Diversity and inclusion is part of our Johnson & Johnson talent strategy. That is how we look at our employees and our future employees. Johnson & Johnson Design is a great role model for making progress in this area. When, uh, when I look back, six years ago, I was the only woman on the J&J &J Design Leadership Team. And now there are five of us, an increase of over 50%. I think that's pretty great, don't you? Yeah, yeah it's so it's impressive. Really great. Relating to that, STEM 2D had a big goal in 2015 to reach 1 million girls by 2020. How is J&J &J making a difference in the number of girls and women who are interested in STEM 2D? Well, we're so proud. We reached 6 million girls by the end of 2019, which was ahead of our goal. Our volunteer-led movement aims to improve all of our futures by getting more girls and boys excited about STEM 2D subjects and careers. Together with JA Worldwide and our other partners, we inspire girls like yourselves to become STEM 2D change agents. We're aligning women in STEM 2D with United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, specifically goal number five, gender equality, and goal number eight, decent work and economic growth. We want to impact 15 million girls over the next five years via long-term programming and curriculum development. We really hope you achieve your goal. So moving on, our final question, Somi, is specifically about COVID-19. JNG is actively working with others on a vaccine as well as supporting doctors and nurses in many countries around the world. What does it feel like to be on the front lines of this global pandemic? This is an exciting time to be working in healthcare, whether as a first responder, scientist, or designer. The global pandemic is teaching us how interconnected we are. We can only defeat this virus together. Our team at Johnson & Johnson won't stop until there is a vaccine for COVID-19. We're collaborating to accelerate the development of a vaccine and working around the clock to do this as quickly as possible while making sure we put the safety of people first. At Johnson & Johnson, we see the connection between human health and a healthy planet. We share a responsibility to improve the health and well-being of every person. But we can only do this by working in partnership and collaborating with people around the world. I'm so proud that we've been able to provide equipment, training, our products, and financial donations to support people on the front lines of healthcare. That is really very impressive and exciting. So now we're going to turn to questions from our listeners. We've had a few questions come in. Uh, We'll start with one for Sami, <clears throat> which is somebody was wondering what the poster board behind you is, if that's an example of your work in design thinking. Well, that is actually uh, a, a map, a uh, kind of a representation of how I imagine the work that we do in design connecting different parts of the enterprise. And the background is this historic map of, of nerves that uh, I found in a history of science book. So there's this incredible beauty to representations of the human body. And it's also a metaphor because a company is a body too. And so how do we best look at the connectivity and the systems and the ways that, that we have to create uh, working together, collaborating between different aspects of, of a company? So that's just a little bit of um, mapping that I have been doing. That's fantastic. Okay, second question is also for you. How do young kids get more involved in STEM 2D careers? And then I think it would be great to get Nikki and Nishi sort of thinking about that as well, maybe answering that question after you do, Sami. So I think that's a great question because the way that subjects typically are taught in the classroom doesn't always consider how to make it tangible. 
And so design is a lot about hands-on. So how do we take a theory or um, knowledge about a particular area of science and show the so what factor? How do we make something with that knowledge? And so what's so important for kids is to experience hands-on activities that demonstrate the power of science and what it means in their own personal lives. Yeah, I totally agree on that. Um, for us, what we do normally in schools is just read about a topic in a biology book or something, some other book. But during the JA experience that we went to, we got, as Nikki mentioned earlier, we got to do a simulation of a surgery and that really got me into STEM careers. And hands-on experiences really seems very interesting and out of the box to many kids like and me also. Yes, I think it's really important that kids uh, engage in hands-on activities so that they are exposed to more of these different types of like STEM 2D concepts. And that's exactly what we did, which is uh, how we know like information about all these careers and I think it would be great to sign up for workshops like this it's really eye-opening and super enriching. That's great. I think the other point that I want to make about career readiness is that we don't know what careers will exist in the future. We may suspect that there will be continuity with some things but we know that there's new technologies on the horizon and new situations such as a global pandemic. So I think that what we want to do is to foster curiosity and creative thinking. How can kids everywhere begin to engage and feel empowered to contribute to the future solutions, which include careers that perhaps we don't even know about now? That's right. So many careers that young people will be going into haven't even been invented yet. They will exist at some point in the future. So we have two um, pretty similar questions. Um, again, why don't we start out with Sami and then Nikki and Nishi, if you have some, some thoughts, weigh in. Um, so they're both from uh, Christabel and I'll just read them both. Exactly what action steps are J &J, is J&J &J making to employ more women, uh, especially ensuring gender bias doesn't affect employment decisions? And then this is sort of a follow on to that. Have you, Sami, I think ever encountered any objections because you were a woman in STEM if so, how did you handle them? And then I think the follow on for our two interviewers is, do you feel that there will be some gender bias as you go into these STEM 2D careers as, as you go forward? Or do you, just, do you just not see that as an issue anymore? All right, I'll leave you guys to answer. So I'll start off, Terry, with the question about what j, &J is doing. So as I mentioned before, we do have a very strong diversity and inclusion strategy and leaders are held accountable to, to help to change the profile of their teams if they tend to be more homogeneous or if they know that they need to make sure that they're recruiting individuals from different backgrounds, including women. And there are always going to be um, maybe countries where we need to work harder because the social norms may be different, but we do strongly believe that we can make a difference by helping all of our employees understand unconscious bias. And so the company has adopted training on unconscious bias for every single person. And that is taken very seriously because I think all of us, including myself, have to sometimes step back and say, oh, I was making an assumption based on somebody maybe going on leave or somebody perhaps not speaking up in a certain way. And so we need to make sure that we're not just expecting people to all be cut from the same mold. So that means introverts as well as extroverts, people who have different leadership styles as well as different cultural backgrounds. And inclusion is challenging. It's not always comfortable to have a very diverse team because we tend to fall back into what we know and what is familiar, but it's extremely business critical in order to bring together teams. And data shows that high-performing teams in terms of innovation have diverse backgrounds. Which and, takes us right to the topic of this, of this uh, live stream, right? Is diversity in STEM 2D. 
So, and then maybe speak to your personal experience and then Nikki and Nishi, if you guys want to chime in on sort of what you think is in the future for you. Personally, I'm so lucky in many ways. I had very supportive parents who raised me to believe that I could do anything. I have been lucky in having teachers and colleagues and managers who have also been very supportive about uh, helping me stretch and grow into new spaces. What I have found occasionally is that in certain industries, there might be a culture that is more uh, conventionally male. And so I have experienced in the past before coming to Johnson & Johnson um, feedback that I needed to speak up more. And, and I really did not feel that just raising your voice in a meeting to hear your voice was how I wanted to behave. And so I've tried to be authentic in uh, raising my voice when I have a point to make, but not simply taking over a room because I can drown out other voices. So I think that there's, um, there's a lot of things that sometimes women encounter, especially if they are maybe more on the quiet side. And so it's important to recognize that not everyone shows up in the same way, but that that doesn't mean that their capabilities are different. I actually really agree with you, but I think that maybe in the future, all like being a woman in like STEM to D career specifically will be not as a big of a challenge because I feel like there there are a lot of, there's a lot of awareness going on there's a lot of like change going about so personally I think it wouldn't really be much of a problem but my knowledge is still very limited so I have to see how that works out. Initially I was really fearful about facing gender biasness in the future when I go into the workforce but after I heard about what Somi said about what J&J is doing and how it became, it went from a one girl in the team to 50% full of women, I was really confident. And I'm sure that in the future with all these developments and changes happening, like what Nikki mentioned, gender biasness may not be a prominent issue anymore. And there is the future, ladies and gentlemen. Very excited about their futures in STEM 2D and, and just girls and women in general. So those are all the questions that have come in. Um, so I'm gonna hand it back over to you, Nishi and Nikki. Thank you, Somi, for speaking with us today. And we were really excited to learn more about your work, hear more about what J&J is doing, as well as find out more about the STEM 2D initiative. I'm so happy to be here with you and to learn also about your experiences in Singapore. It's great that we're able to connect. Thank you for staying up late. And I wanted to just leave with three thoughts. So these are three design thinking principles. It starts with people. So make sure that you put people at the center of any problem solving and understand what is most meaningful to individuals who might be very different from ourselves. Allow the space to both diverge and converge when developing solutions. Don't just accelerate to a solution before you've done that discovery and the prototyping and the, the, the different testing and learning cycles. And, and finally, radical collaboration. That's the way that we talk about the need to increase the diversity of teams to ensure that we are practicing inclusive design. We, we have to have mutual respect. We have to go outside of our own comfort zones. And we have to realize that we alone cannot solve things. It has to be done in collaboration with many others. This is really an enriching session. We hope you'll tune in next week for our final live stream. This one hosted by Girl Scouts of the USA. Visit stem2d.org slash live for information and registration. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.